Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, now in our 14th year. Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger started out as radio, went to this strange little thing called podcast a million years ago, and I'm so thankful I did. Nobody thought it would ever last, haha. And here we are. It's about as viable as possible. There's well over, it's almost one and a half million podcasts and growing constantly. So if you have a niche, if you have an interest, there it is. And I want to say thank you so much for taking an interest in this subject, which is your number one transformation conversation. Very cutting edge, very spiritual. And we foray into channeling and ETs and uh, pretty soon the Fae. We've got some great guests always coming up. So definitely subscribe to the show. Definitely subscribe so that you get dibs and you get to know exactly who is on when, and you can hear or watch us on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Want to thank the sponsors of this show, Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. Oh my gosh, they've been with us for so long and they do such beautiful energy work out in the world. If you want to work on yourself or become a facilitator, you can do so online or in person anywhere in the world. Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com, as well as Access Consciousness, Dot com. And I am, as I said, Debbie Dashinger. I teach entrepreneurs, speakers, coaches, healers, the time, effective action steps to write a highly engaging book. I also run a company that takes authors' books to a guaranteed international bestseller. And as well, I show you how to book podcast and radio interview guest spots. And not just to get the guest spots, but how to do them properly and get massive results. If you would like my free gift to you about how to get booked on interviews, what to prepare, I put together some templates as well as awesome videos that people have been loving, and I offer them to you as well as my friend so that you can become visible because that's really what I do out in the world. I am a visibility expert and I want to see you become visible as well. So go to debbie-inger.com slash gift and get your gift it's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift and enjoy. I love hearing from a lot of you, by the way. Thank you for writing. So conversation today, this episode is about how it is never too late to create your miraculous life. And it's interesting because that might feel like an age thing to some people, but I'm assuming that for a lot of people alive and breathing today, that's just like sometimes getting through the day and all the uncertainty in the world. So really apropos subject, never too late. You can still create a miraculous life. My guest is Wendy Darling. Wendy is the founder of the Miraculous Living Institute with over 35 years of experience as a relationship and transformational results expert, speaker, seminar facilitator, management and organizational development consultant, master healer and coach. She's created a system that allows people to get results with ease and speed. Wendy works with all facets of relationships, such as singles who want to attract, finally, love in their life, couples who want to replenish their relationship, and the relationship that we all have with our body and health, business owners and executives and their personnel to strengthen the team for greater productivity and profits. Wendy Darling also trains and certifies coaches and practitioners in her programs and methodology. She formerly hosted two of her own radio shows and has been featured in Forbes, as well as numerous other publications. She's the number one best-selling author of Create Your Miraculous Life, It's Never Too Late, and also The Miracle That Is Your Life. Wendy's clients repeatedly refer to her as their personal fairy godmother for assisting them in turning their dreams into reality, regardless of where they are in life. And if you'd like to learn more about her, go to her name. It's wendydarling.com. And with that, I welcome Wendy to Dare to Dream. Thank you so much for being here. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> I don't think you know, but I once upon a time had a business, which makes us sisters. I used to run a jewelry business where I made jewelry and sold it. It was called Debbie Darling Creations. Oh. And so you and I 
already have so much in common, but I thought that was, I've always sort of loved your name because of that connection to my past. Oh, I love it. Well, Wendy, darling, and Debbie. I, I love having more of the darlings in my family. <laughs> yeah, it's such a great name. And I, I just want to start by honoring you, Wendy, and saying, you know, I read your book, and I think what I was struck with the most is the resilience of the human spirit. And <clears throat> even in such extreme difficulties, heartbreak, not knowing how to go forward, you did. Not easy, but you did one step at a time. But I just want to sort of celebrate you here today and all that you are and all that you allowed to happen in spite of and because of what you went through. So thanks for the book and thanks for the inspiration. Oh, well, that's lovely. Thank you very much. You know, it's been many years already since that really horrific day that my whole life changed very fast. Um, and, and it has been a journey. And I think that that's one of the things that I want to impress upon people. It's part of what had me write this book, that it's never too late for anything. And one of the statements that I always talk about, and I know it's in the book more than once, is just like you're saying, you take a step and you keep taking steps. And never give up ever even when we want to and i've had my fair share of moments where i have wanted to or i've had a pity party or i've just been angry <laughs> and it's like what else do i have to do here so i have a lot of compassion for what people are going through because i do know what it's like to struggle i do know what it's like to wonder when are, when are things gonna shift? But I also know what it's like to come out on the other side. So you wrote this manual for reinvention. It's called Create Your Miraculous Life. And <clears throat> you're an expert on navigating this kind of change, which I think is great for people. And I'm curious as to what kind of blueprint it is what kind of system is the miraculous living system? Yeah, um, well, first of all, I meet people where they are. So even though I have in general a structure, uh, it just depends because when I work with people, it's kind of like if you would look at who you are and all your components are like a Rubik's cube of a different kind, I am looking at what happened that got you out of alignment and we put you back into alignment. So your mind is working in alignment with your heart's desire and you're able to materialize, you're able to experience the life you've only been able to hope for or imagine. So we close that gap. So first of all, um, one of the first steps is what I call magic wand time because all too often people start out telling all the misery, the trauma, the whatever. And that's important. It's not to be denied or overlooked. But at some point in my career, I thought, hmm, especially once I started to learn more about how the brain worked, um, my training and how I worked with individuals and groups was let's look at what happened and try to do something about that. But what happens is you're, you've programmed your mind to be in a find it and fix it mode. And so you're always looking for something that's wrong or off or whatever. So instead we go in the opposite direction. So I call this magic wand time. So if you have a magic wand, how do you wanna be living your life? And we look at 10 areas in your life and we create a vision and we create a mission. And how I look at those two distinction is, a vision is just that. It's really the picture of what you want your life to look like. So for example, I had a vision, I still have a vision of living in a home that overlooks the ocean. Now, when I first created that vision, I lived in Dallas, Texas. So the ocean was kind of far away. But today, I will admit, I don't quite have that view yet, but I live in San Diego. And 
I am a whole lot closer to that ocean today than I was before. And what's important about this is it actually in my world then relates to your mission because it's great that I want a pretty house and I want a view of the ocean, but why? What's the higher meaning and purpose of having that kind of home? Well, for me, first of all, it's like I'm getting my job done, the job that I came to do on this earth. And it's, it's my reward. And it tells me, keep going. And also, having a home like that, home is very important to me because it nourishes me. And it's critical that I take care of myself because of the work that I do with other people. So, so we look at vision and mission. Then I actually do healing work. Um, after my accident and over a period of time, I began to see energy. I learned, I discovered how to work with it. I, I was given the gift of sound. I also, um, I also channeled uh, designs that also have an energy, a frequency to them. And people put their hands on these cards. And either if I'm working with them or they're listening to one of my audios, you know, the sound healing on, on its own is very powerful and effective. The cards and the frequency that they have when you put your hands on them are also extremely effective. However, when you do both together, it creates a very unique circuitry and it allows to release all that isn't really you that you inadvertently picked up over time. It allows for part of the process is also a brain training process that strengthens the mind so that the mind is your new best friend. So instead of working against you, it's working for you. So if, if you're wanting a new relationship, if you're wanting to make more money in your business, your mind is saying, we're doing it, we're going for it, it's happening. And, and so then it's just taking action steps. And so as I mentioned the Rubik's Cube, it doesn't take a lot of time working with my clients, um, but we just have to see how the adjusting goes. And so that's the essence of what it is. First question, do you have handy one of your cards so we can see it? And, and if not, don't worry, but just so sure. curious. They're right over there. Can I grab it? You can okay. grab it. And I'm going to ask you a question and just keep answering as you grab. Okay. They're so right I'm over. also very curious when you talk about, you look at 10 areas of a client's life, and then you map those out with vision and a mission, and then do some healing work, and then the action steps. Do you have 10 different missions or do the 10 areas, is it like an umbrella? Is it encompassed by one mission? Um, when we first begin, and I use the cards in, in the process, especially since we're on camera, some of these will be easier to be seen. Mm. So this is passion. Mm. It's beautiful. This is mastery. This is fairy godmother wisdom. Uh -huh. And I'll show you just one more. This is called HOME. And it's an acronym for heaven on earth with me in the middle. Oh my gosh. And, and so they all have a, a definitive energy to them. And so to answer your question, when I initially do this body of work with my clients, we do look at the individual missions. But by the time we're done, in, in conjunction, because they use the cards, they pull cards to identify what the context will be for their vision and their mission and what support they might need, things like that. Um, then we do have an overarching mission. Okay. And I know in your book, you refer to something that you call results accelerator process. What is results accelerator and how can folks use it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, 
very interesting the way it came about. I don't even remember anymore how it came to me. It was probably another one of those little gifts. Um, but I'm always looking for ways to get my clients to get easier, faster results. And it was like, hmm, you know, what if, so I experimented. So those 10 areas that I talked about, what I'll do is I, I use applied kinesiology, muscle testing to determine which of these 10 are to be your entry point to getting whatever your result is. So this acts as kind of like your kingpin domino and it just knocks things over. Let me give you an example. So for example, there was somebody and, and his, this happened a number of years ago, pretty early on after, while I was trying this out. And this man's business was really declining and fast. And so we were working and his results accelerator was he was to start dating. Now, I want you to know that me, the person, would not have suggested that. He, the person, would not have suggested it. You know, he said, I'm not feeling good. I don't have that much money in my pocket. And I said, you know, can, let's just try it. Let's see what happens. And so he got online. He happened to be living in Costa Rica at the time, got online, started speaking to women. In a very short time, he happened to connect with a woman in Brazil. And they just had this amazing connection. And, and I'm talking a very short period of time. I'm going to say a couple of weeks. And he's like telling me, oh, my gosh, you know, I met this woman and blah, blah, blah. Well, even as he started talking to women, guess what started happening? He started feeling better. He was enjoying life a little more. And within an even shorter period of time, he got awarded a really great contract. And he ended up moving to Brazil after a couple of months because he had the kind of work that he could do like you and I right now over Zoom or whatever, Skype at that time. So that's an example. There was a woman that came to me who wanted to release weight because I had worked with her a good friend who had released like 60 pounds in about three, four months. Um, her weight just went poof. And, um, and so she came to me and we did results accelerator and her entry point actually was her career. And she was not happy with me. She said, I didn't come here to talk about my career. Well, what ended up happening was it turned out she wasn't happy with the job that she had. Mm -hmm. I was able to talk her and supported her. I said, well, just get out there, explore a little bit. She actually got a job within, again, a very short period of time. It was a matter of three or four weeks. And guess what started happening after she started her job? Her weight started to release. So it's just, I find it so interesting. And sometimes it is finance to finance, career to career. But I love that there's something about the magic that's provided that accelerates people's results by doing this. I just want to say to people who are listening, stay tuned because at some point in this show, I've pre-asked, <laughs> I vetted myself to make sure it's okay with Wendy if she gifts us with a healing experience. So you're going to want to stay here for that. And I know that you offer readers a way to fill out their own personal results accelerator for quick transformation. So I want to give out that website too for folks who are interested, wendydarling.com slash miraculous lifebook. Do they find folks who go there, wendydarling.com slash miraculous lifebook, will they find a way that they can jumpstart and start to get some results? Yes. Um, it's, it's, um, I've laid out in the book, you know, the link as well as what you just provided and it is a way to identify. And it's not that you ignore it. Let's say you wanna make more money. 
and your health comes up as the number one results accelerator. Well, it doesn't mean you just spend all your time with your health. It just means you need to put that in the front of the line. It doesn't also mean that, you know, you have to do that first thing in the morning. That's not always possible, but it becomes a top priority. And when you do that, something just happens. You know, Debbie, you, I know you, you are aware of this. Sometimes we can't explain how everything happens. But, and truthfully, I love that I can't explain everything that I do because isn't it great that we don't have to figure everything out? I mean, I'm a curious person, but at the same time, like when my healing work and my healing sounds were coming out of me, I didn't know what was happening. When I was having, you know, starting to see energy, I didn't know what was happening. And so, you know, it's just really important, you know, to just have faith and to surrender. And it's amazing when we relax into it, how much more actually can be provided. You talk about something called mischief makers, like these, <laughs> these thoughts and these doubts that undermine the vision we have. What are some of the mischief makers? Oh my gosh. You know, it depends on, you know, everybody's different. I can speak to myself. It was really cute when I wrote my first book. Um, there was a chapter on mischief makers in there. And I, when I wrote my first book, I literally structured my time, you know, maybe in two hour increments here or there. And this Saturday, I remember it was a Saturday morning. I had my time structured. I'm cleaning my countertops. I'm organizing things. And I'm going, I need to sit down and I need to write. And I kept getting distracted. And so finally I sat down and I didn't realize that that was the chapter I was going to write that day. And I went, oh, well, now I have something to start my chapter. So that part was good. But it's kind of like this. I don't know about you, but this phone can be a huge distractor between emails, between Facebook or LinkedIn or, you know, I don't even do a lot of what a lot of people do. And just, I mean, it's encyclopedias on, on steroids, you know, it, in the good old days, we actually had paper encyclopedias. Now we have this little thing that can do everything. You know, there, it was a sad day, sort of, temporarily. My son's very technologically savvy. And he was my go-to guy when I had technological questions. And there was a day he said, mom, just Google it. And I was uh -huh. like, I said, no, but you don't understand. This is my bonding time with you. <laughs> He's come around. He, he does help me today. But so, you know, it's the distractions that allow us, that get us off target. You know, for me, I've recovered pretty well from a brain injury. I have to have things organized. I have to have things neat. Otherwise, I'm easily distracted. I would imagine people that are ADD or ADHD, it's something similar to that. And, and so it's just what takes you off. Course. There's by the way, even science around the fact that social media is programmed with the intention to become an addiction. I would and believe that. This is why, you know, and I'll use this for anyone watching. So that makes sense. But constantly, blah, 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 blah. You, you know, they cannot, cannot, cannot stop. I know. Because it's built so we do not stop engaging. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. It's really, it's, it's, so that is a huge mischief maker in our lives today. There, we have so much co coming in. We have so many options between what's coming in on social media, my gosh, on television and all these different stations now. And, you know, it's like, I love days that I put it all away. I actually design. Sundays are typically my day literally of rest, you know, meaning, okay, world, I'm pretty sure you're still gonna be here tomorrow. <laughs> and people that need me know how they can get to me in an emergency. Otherwise, 
because we're overstimulated and we, our brain truly needs to rest and it allows for our hearts to replenish as well. So it just becomes really important. So yeah, mischief makers, you know, you decide to go on an eating plan because you want to release some weight or you need to get healthier. And then suddenly, you know, the, the pizza or the chocolate or the whatever suddenly, you know, comes about. I know that one personally, you know, it's been a lifetime journey for me. And I live with this wonderful man who's a huge foodie mm. and he has to eat to keep up his weight. I don't like him about that. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, I can't say, no, you can't bring this into the house. So it's teaching me all sorts of things. So it's just whatever it is, you know what your mischief makers are. And if you don't, that means you're not paying attention. Mm. Just how you get distracted. Years ago, that's actually how I got through food cravings. So I, I intimately know what you're talking about, but I don't, it feels like another human and another lifetime. But I do know, I am well aware that once upon a time, certainly in my youth and my 20s, maybe a little bit in my 30s, early 30s, that I felt beholden if a craving took over me, like, it wasn't going to go away. I just had to, had to, had to have it. And I usually had to, had to have way too much of it. And somewhere along the line, I would say to myself, Deb, it's not leaving the planet. Like literally, <laughs> right? If you don't run out and get, I don't know, fill in the blank, gelato right now, it's not leaving the planet. It's literally a choice every day. You can decide to not to just not for right now. And it really mitigated that whole intensity for me. And it suddenly became manageable. It's like, yeah, I think I'll make a different choice. That's less, because that craving is, um, is that's I yeah. find very distracting. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people have it. But again, typically a craving, uh, regardless of what area that might be, also is trying to take you away from something deeper that you are not quite willing to mm. feel you know i think in my evolution as i grew more you know we there's been a lot of focus on the mind and it's been brilliant and it's been invaluable but it's also even more important to really tap into the wisdom of the heart mm. i believe that that's really the first brain and when we nourish that so, so if you're feeling sad or angry, it's important to give it a voice. It's really just wanting attention. And it's wonderful just to write out, okay, what do you want to say to me? You know, I'm feeling frustrated that fill in the blank, um, that work's not working out the way I want it to. Okay, great. So I talk to that anger, let it talk to you. So you spill out as you're journaling, whatever cockadoo, that's my technological term for the day, that you want to say. And I mean, really, just let it out of your system. It's healthy to do that. And if you want to, and if you're alone, or if it's safe, you know, scream in a pillow or pound on a bed, you want to get that emotion out of you. And then change hands to your non-dominant hand. So that means if you're right-handed, you'll use your left hand and vice versa. And see what it wants to say. And you may be surprised at what that emotion wants to say. In the early 90s, my very first um, personal growth seminar was what's today called Loving Yourself Lean. And I did this exercise where I, was writing to my body, or in my case, it was my thighs, because I always thought my thighs were bigger than they should be. And, and so, so I s said what I had to say, and then I switched hands, and I let my thighs talk mm -hmm. to me. And they said, how would you feel if you were looked at with hate and disgust each and every day? Wouldn't you want to hide? 
That was eye-opening. You know, every little part of us wants love. Mm. It's really that simple. The more we can learn to be kind to ourselves, to love ourselves, be kind to our bodies, be kind to each other. You know, love is really, you know, the Beatles had it, you know? I don't know if love is all there is that we need, um, but it's a good chunk and it's a great place to start. Mm. I, as you know, I have recently had stem cell surgery. Um, it's a pretty big expensive deal and two weeks recovery thereafter. And I'm going to have my second and final one at the end of this month. And in order for me to align with healing, but also a lot of stress in my life right now, what I've done and what I started picturing is something I've never used before. You were telling the story about the thighs and the thighs saying, hey, you know, how about some compassion? How would you feel if you were me? And that's pretty illuminating. And what I started to do, um, I actually heard this somewhere and I just started to implement it. I thought, brilliant, to see every one of my cells with the writing, you are loved, you are enough, I am healed, I am whole. And then all the my strands of DNA with that writing and then all my muscles and ligaments with that writing. And it's really, I have to say, like I woke up today and I know most people who go through what I go through are in much worse condition it's a journey. I'm not there yet, right? I'm not three months, six months down the road to really be reaping the full benefits, but I'm in the process and I'm, I find it remarkable how well I'm doing so far. So I believe so firmly in what you're talking about, this dialogue, like literally creating a relationship with this, this suit we carry around that we're often so separated from when in fact it contains enormous wisdom, oh, right? And gifts. You know, it's been a couple of years now, but my dad passed away when he was 56 from a heart attack. So I wanted to get my heart checked out. You know, I was already in my late sixties and it's like, okay, let's see how this puppy's doing. So I had an elect, I think it's a, called an echocardiogram and you can literally see your heart in action. And I, I couldn't believe that little sucker's just going like crazy. It's like it's running a marathon 24 seven. It's phenomenal, you know, to see how, and I don't think about my heart most of the time. And I do more than I certainly did before that test. And there's such an appreciation. Oh my gosh, I can hardly believe how hard you work each and every day. And to just love it and acknowledge it and say, keep on going. And, you, and it's just, there's so much, unfortunately, that we don't take time to value and appreciate. And so I love that you're talking to your body and you're seeing it whole and healthy. And with these beautiful words, because we now know that words have power and they can either heal and transform, or they can also take you down. And they truly make a huge difference. Mm. Well, we're at the point where I am very curious <laughs> because it's amazing how I, that I know you, but I have never known you as healer. I've never experienced your healing. And so will you prep us um, I'm going to like acquiesce to you, let you take over and guide us through this. Okay. I'm happy to. Let me just take a real quick sip of water. Absolutely. And I just want to, as she's sipping, I'm going to give out a quote. And this is from Wendy, which is anything that you desire is your truth. What you want, wants you. And she also says, we are capable of amazing things. So with that, I turn us over to Wendy Darling. Oh, thanks. Well, what I'm gonna suggest is I want you to put your hands over your heart and I want you to think about the one thing that you would love more than anything right now to experience. So if it's, you know, a new client, if it's a different job, if it's you, you 
want to be taking better care of your body, if it's attracting love, whatever that desire is, I want you to acknowledge it and honor it because it's pointing you in the direction of your truth. And what I'm going to just do is I'm going to open us up and we're going to pour in a lot of love into your heart, into your body, so that your heart opens more. Because I will say, every single person I have ever worked with in all these years, with the exception of one, and he didn't really work with me, it's a man I happen to hang out with, um, is everybody's constricted, restricted in some way in their ability to receive. So what I want to do is to place more love into your heart and your energy field so that you can relax and open up to the miracles and to the gifts that life is wanting to provide for you. Because as, as Debbie just said, anything that you want not only is your truth, but it's trying to find you too. And so it's allowing for these things to happen. So put your hands over your heart. If you just close your eyes for a minute, I'll be doing that as well because I'm going to be connecting to those who are listening right now, listening in the future. Oh, this is exciting. I see so many of you. And we're just going to shower you with love right now. What, tell me what you saw. I mean, I'm kind of still in it. So if you can tell me what was happening for you while you, I was, I opened my eyes a tiny bit, but mostly they were closed. I saw that your hands were doing something and clearly you were singing over us. Tell me your experience as a healer of what that is. Yeah. So first of all, when I get into my healing mode, my sound healing and my hands take on a life that's its own. So it's not like I have a top 10, you know, for, top 40 list of songs to choose from necessarily. And my experience was actually kind of what I said initially, that 
I just felt like we were very gently just folding and providing love, lots mm. of love to the mm. infuse into everyone's heart and body and energy system. Mm. And what was interesting near the end though, there was a coming together. It was like this message of we need to come together. We need to support each other. It's time not only for you individually to do what you were brought to do, but it's also time for us to come together more because in numbers, we will support each other's energy and efforts even better and are able to accomplish what it is we want to accomplish easier. That was beautiful. It was so relaxing. I could have conked out. Honestly, I could have, and, and I would have hoped if I had conked out, you would have kept going. Incredibly <laughs> soothing. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think that's the most common initial reaction people have is they feel very relaxed and calm. Earlier in my career, I used to give people sound baths. They would come in and I would just heal for quite some time. But now I just go until it stops. You know, it's not like I decide again, I'm, I'm just being utilized as a vehicle, which I love. And I know your show delves into all different ways, but, and when the sound healing started to come through, I also, as I started to receive my healing gifts, um, there were languages that were initially came through. So I don't remember the order of them any longer, but I remember there was something that was Spanish, Chinese. Um, gosh, I'm, I wish I could, you know, I don't think that way. And then there were also languages that come from other places. Mm. And, and then at some point they all melded. There are still times that I can bring up those languages, but I haven't found them to be necessary most of the time. You know, I only do it like if somebody says, oh, come on, turn it on. But that doesn't happen very often. It's just not necessary. So all of those melded into what you experienced just now. Mm. Cool. It really was. You know, here I had been this traditional management consultant. You know, I was going into companies and working with executives and their teams. I mean, I was a, I wore suits, I was traditional, and suddenly all this is happening. But then it really did get to be fun. It's like, wow, what's going to be next? And, and it was a great adventure. And it was very healing for me, you know, between my accident, it took a very long time for me to physically recover, even longer to recover emotionally, and then even longer to heal from my brain injury mm. that I didn't even know I had for a long time. However, you know, it's, it was probably my accident that might have opened my brain and opened me up to receive all of this. So even though I kind of wish it would have happened a little easier, um, today I'm very grateful. So folks who want to get back in the game and the premise of your book is it's never too late. Talk about that. How is it never too late? How is it timely? How do we get back in the game? Yeah, I think it's very timely right now because we've had such an unusual period of time with the pandemic. Um, and I think the first step is to get really honest. What's your deepest desires? Uh, all too often, we either get caught up in our worry, our lives, our busy schedules, whatever. And it's too easy, or maybe even potentially too painful to recognize, you know, I work quite a bit with singles who want to attract love. And, they, and these people have been hurt. They've had their hearts stomped on. And as much as they would like it, they're also very afraid of it. And so that desire is really pushed down. And so, so much of that, those early days with my clients are just filling them up and getting rid of some of the yuck. You know, I've worked with women who have been abused and in hours they are freed from that trauma, which is really beautiful. So it's just being willing to start. 
You know, it doesn't have to be big. You don't have to figure it out, but just get honest and start believing. You know, I can't believe I'm going to use this reference, but do you remember there was a scene, I grew up, I mean, I'm older than probably you, well, I know I'm older than you and your audience. You know, I'm, I'm now 70, which is very hard for me to believe, but that's another conversation. So I grew up watching Peter Pan on TV and, and there was a scene in the play where Tinkerbell is, is dying. Something happened and I don't even remember what happened to poor Tink. But we were told we had to clap to restore Tinkerbell because we had to say, I do believe in fairies. I do believe in fairies. And you know, in some ways, the same is true for whatever you desire. You have to start believing that that desire in my world was put there by God. And it was put there to act kind of like a carrot dangling out in front of you, tempting you so that you will grow, so that you will evolve and so that you will contribute to fulfill what I refer to as your divine destiny. And so it's just so important to know it's not there to torture you. Your learning curve may just take a little bit longer it certainly did for me in the area, well, probably all areas of my life, you know, between my work, my work's very different today than it was 40 years ago. You know, um, it took a couple of experiences, shall we say, before I came into a happy, healthy relationship. And, and so we, we don't know what the journey is, but you need to be willing. You know, I, I remember being so sad. And one of my good friends said, you are the best crier I have ever met. And I'm like, I didn't know that that was going to be one of my claim to fames. But I always was willing to go into the depth of the whatever, because I wasn't willing to give up what could be possible at the other end of the spectrum. And, and you know, even if it is sadness, your body has a really excellent mechanism that most of the time it will say, okay, we've had enough for now, we're gonna rest. Now, and that's also why we do have professionals out there to, to add support. So you don't have to do this alone. If you feel like there's something that you want but you haven't been able to get your motor going and make it happen, there are people like me, there are people like in Debbie's world also, we help support you. Just like in the healing, it's like, come on, let's support each other. Let's get this, let's get this party started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Global humanity, please. If ever there was a time, this truly is it. Um, well said. And I just want to, you know, you talked about probably in every area of your life, how you've had a comeuppance, an up-leveling, um, a healing that has created something fully new on the outside. And in your book, you mention that of all your challenges, and by the way, I wish people could fully see you stand up. I mean, to me, honestly, you're stunning. You've always been this tall drink of water. <laughs> um, I've always thought so slender and beautiful and well put together. And like, so it was very um, humbling, you know, to read that you said, yeah, having a healthy relationship with my body was really a major challenge. And you had this quote, which is the, the issues are in your tissues are creating the junk in your trunk. Wow. So for you who has done this journey, body journey, and you help people, this is one of the things you help them with, how is, how is love truly the answer to a healthy body? What, what did you learn when you navigated that road about what your body really requires and how to make that connection happen? Yeah, I think one of the earlier realizations was that I was using my body as a scapegoat for some other insecurities that I had. It was a lot easier to take out on my body that to recognize I was hurt or disappointed in myself or lonely or whatever it was. And also I grew up in an environment that my mother was very critical. She actually was abusive. 
And, and so unfortunately, when we get programmed that way, we can take over. And I, don't, I didn't need my mom anymore. It was living and breathing inside of me. And so it was learning how to parent my body. Our bodies, for example, I look at it as our bodies are like a newborn baby. You know, when you're holding that little baby, it's relying 150% on you to feed it, to care for it, to wash it, to, to change its diaper, everything. Because if you don't care for it, it can't live. Well, the same is exactly true for our body. It's at the mercy of what we choose to do. So it, it, so nutrition is very important. Water is very important. Movement is very important. However, what's most important is how you view your body no matter what and how you care for your body no matter what. I, you know, during the pandemic and not being able to exercise and, you know, um, let's just say I got a little fuller than I had been. And, you know, and now I'm just now a month after being able to go to a gym and feel safe in doing so, at least in this moment, it's all changing. And, um, and so I'm, I'm still loving my thighs. I look at them and, and I'm like, you know, you're doing great. Look at what you just did on that elliptical. Look how many pounds you just lifted. You know, isn't it wonderful that you carry me each and every day? You, I, you know, given that initially, I didn't know if I would ever walk again. I have such appreciation that my legs work. And again, it's just, there's an exercise that I learned many, many years ago. It's called care of the animal. And it's, it comes from the body of, hmm, there was a time I would remember, not now. So the essence of it is you look at your hand, for example, with the eyes of love. You know, if, if you've ever, what, you know, if it's your dog, that you can just look at or your loved one or your little baby, whatever that feeling of love can be, unconditional love, you look at your hand with admiration and appreciation and you look at your forearm and you do the same. And it's really nice to even gently love it and comfort it because most of us are walking around with skin hunger. And you know, think about it. That was How good. You... That was really good. I <laughs> never heard that before. And that is so apropos skin hunger. It is so true. I am somebody, one of my love languages absolutely is physical touch. Yeah, me too. Yeah. To be starving at the buffet is <laughs> no bueno. It doesn't no, work. it's true. You know, it's one of the first things I teach singles because, you know, God bless them. I've had so much compassion for them especially for those that are living by themselves during this pandemic. It's been mm. so hard, so challenging. Thank God for Zoom. My only regret is I didn't invest in Zoom. <laughs> right. Happened, right. So, so it, it's just having that appreciation and really just, oh my gosh. And you know, it's really interesting because I'm noticing changes and, and I still notice that I get that little critical voice that shows up even today. And I'm like, oh, where did you come from? I'm sorry, you're not welcome here anymore. Thanks for sharing. And we're doing great. Mm, it's, it's, a life, it's a lifelong <laughs> learning. It's not like we're ever done because what also happens is as we grow, as we evolve, you know, there's a tendency that there could be a little niggle that just wasn't taken care of that shows up. Very, very beautiful to rebuild yourself and the re-talk, the new talk and, and all the benefits. Even as you say, getting fluffy during COVID and then, you know, once things started opening up and having new choices and, and to love your body through that process instead of 
hating yourself thin, which is so cruel. You know, I think that's one thing I so value about my life today is how much kinder I am to myself and my body and just life in general. And I think it's so important. It's an important message. You know, I, I, I don't know what I agree to when I was getting ready to come into this lifetime. You know, I have this image that I was sitting in the lap of God and I said, God, this time, I want to experience unconditional love like I've never experienced it before. And God said, ho, 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 wish granted, little girl. And I got to experience a whole lot of contrast of what love didn't look like. And I, you know, I even honor my journey and my struggles that I had, because first of all, it gives me huge compassion for anybody that I work with, but also I was willing, you know, somebody said to me, boy, you're really out on the limb. And I'm like, God, if I could just see a fig leaf, I would be thrilled. What limb, (laughs) you know? But I think that's part of it, to just be willing to go with the journey. Because it's amazing when you're willing to lean into anything that concerns you, scares you, frustrates you, It's just a hand that's being raised. It has something to say for you. And it's going to give you information that's going to make your next step or two easier. Mm, For the brave, this journey is so for the brave. So we're here at the end. And I want to ask you, Wendy, darling, what do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, I think, first of all, I just am wanting to reach so many more people. I want to support individuals and organizations to fulfill their, what I refer to their divine destiny. I feel that's my mission. And so that's one of my dreams. I look forward, thank goodness for Zoom. I love speaking and reaching people in masses. I look forward to speaking on stages again. Um, Personally, I look forward to getting back to some of our travels that we had planned that we postponed. We were supposed to go to Italy and other places. And I'm an adventurous person. So staying at home, I had to get really creative how that was going to be adventurous. And so I'm looking forward to those kind of adventures. And what matters to me most is just being with my friends and my family. You know, I really am a relationship person. Once I'm a friend, it's really hard to get rid of me. (laughs) And and so, you know, um, even having this conversation, Debbie, that's what, that's what I love, you know, and, and if this, these things that we have talked about today helps even just one person, ah, I'm forever grateful for this opportunity. So, you know, I'm, I just want to have fun. You know, I think that's it's really- never too late. That's what I love about what you're saying, being adventurous and getting back, you know, when things open up, you getting back on stages, you traveling, it, it, you are living. It is never too late. And I just want to thank you so deeply for coming on the show and being with me and being with us today. Oh, I've loved every second. It's been wonderful. Thank you, Mm -hmm. Cecilia. Me too. Um, And what a great conversation. And I'm going to end with this quote today from Nick Vujicic. When God doesn't grant your miracles, remember that you are the miracle he sent for somebody else. So allow your intention today, based on this conversation, to be about miracles so you can see them everywhere. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream. And next week on the show, I've got some friends coming on. And this is going to be an amazing, interesting, I'm on the edge of my seat. Justin and Tonya Reckla are going to be here. They are superpower experts. They're the founders of the Superpower Network. Much more than that. Former counterintelligence special agents with the U.S. government because they brought the power of due diligence vetting risk mitigation, counter espionage techniques to the business world in a very unique way. 
And that used to only be reserved for the elite. We're going to deep dive, pull back the curtain on what they know about working for the government, being successful present day business owners, their superpowers and remote viewing. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, don't just dare to dream, dare to create your miraculous dreams. Thanks for joining us.